Clear? Yes. And so you are supposed to also guide your constituent. I, I believe so. If the issue is no public petition, I will address that one. It is the committee that has the statutory responsibility to do that that should be given that. But this one will go to public petition. Well, I think I'm a member of the public petition, Mr. Speaker. You are? I'm a member of public petition. And that is why I'm apprehensive that it's coming from a member of public petition. You want to uh, educate for a job that is not appropriate for a civil job that is not your own. That job is not your own job. It's the work of committee, statutory responsibility for that. So it's like you want to take job for yourself. That's, that's my assumption. I will kindly, kindly urge you to step down the, the second petition. Okay. Go ahead with that petition. Thank you. I step down the, the petitions, please. Thank you. I see to step down all the two petitions. It's, it is the second petition that has to do with the procurement process. Thank you. You have two petitions or three? Okay, the third one. Speak to your mic. The right honorable speaker is the third petition that has to do with the procurement process. This is the one I'm saying that it is not the two of the public petition. Go through the rules, uh, uh, what will order, pay, oh, sorry, the, the, the uh, standing order. You will see the functions of public petition. And I do not think that includes oversighting agencies. Yes, sir. That's why I said I stepped it down, Mr. Thank Speaker. you. So go ahead and let it remain two petitions. Honorable Toby, matters of urgent public importance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, my name is Toby Okechukwu and I represent an area of Wajiriba Federal Constituency from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, I want to request the House through you to permit me to meet, move a motion of urgent public importance regarding the need to curb the rising trend of ritual killings in Nigeria, mindful of the fact that this is not a route to success, and mindful of the fact that among the 200 people that are the richest in the world, the ritualists and the purveyors of such tendencies are not amongst them. So I want to seek the relief of the House and ask that this matter will be heard and heard today. Thank you very much. Any seconder? Any seconder? Honorable Kumu. I represent the good people of Ako Federal Constituency and Fungombe State. I rise to scorn the motion assembly raised by my leader, a source of country. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, right, honorable speaker. Ado Dogwa is my name. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise for purposes of guidance. Uh, with due respect to my respected colleague, right, Honorable Toby Okechuku, 
when you bring matters of this nature to the floor of the House of Representatives, of course one is free to discuss some of these things in the context and the content of what they are. I would like to please point by way of guidance that in, this, in your subsequent submission, in case you want to make debate on it, I think it's only dilatory. It is also speculative if you say in the body of your motion that the, some richest people, the richest people in the globe, are ritualists. He said so. They are not ritualists. So next time when you are speaking, please raise your volume so that the leader can hear you very well. Sorry, I, I withdraw my observation. Thank you. But I, I thought you should allow us to put the question. Now that the matter has been cleared. No, there is no urgency in it. That is what I want. No, the urgency is that there are some people who are for his own constituency that are under captivity and the fear is that they may be killed. It's urgent. It's urgent. It's urgent. quite urgent. Thank you. <laughs> A chief whip, you are overruled. A chief whip, you are overruled. Those of you with the motion say aye. Aye. Against your name. <laughs> the ass have it. Thank you, motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is T. Tobi Okechuku. I represent an area of Goji River Federal Constituency from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank Honorable Kumo for seconding the motion and the House for approving that is held urgently. I also understand the challenges and dilemma of uh, the House leader, who is imagining that I said. Uh, that the uh, ritualists are among the 200. I said they are not and should not be a guide for our citizens. Uh, maybe he has a problem. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, this is a matter of urgent public importance on the need to curb the rising trend of ritual killings in Nigeria. The House notes that the incidents of ritual killings have assumed an alarming rate in Nigeria in recent times. The House also notes the upsurge of reported ritual killings with increasing cases of abductions and missing persons in different parts of the country, which in most cases the culprits also rape, maim, kill and obtain sensitive part, body parts of unsuspecting victims for rituals. The House further notes that the Red Cross Society in 2017 reported that it received 10,480 reports of missing persons in Nigeria. The House is aware that on January 22, 2022, three teenage suspects and a 20-year-old reportedly killed one Safia Kainde and had her head severed and burned in a local port in Abiyokuta, Ogun State. The House is also aware that Ogun State Police Command on Monday, February 7, 2022, reported that one of the suspects confessed that he learned the act of ritual killing from a video he watched on Facebook. The House is further aware. The House is also aware that merchants of such wicked acts often use the social media as a ready tool to advertise their evil behaviors. The House recalls the grievous killing of Iniaba Umoren, a young woman in her 20s, after being lured to a particular location in Rio, Aguaibom State for a job interview as widely reported in the National Dailies. The House is aware that ritual killing has become a predominant theme in most homemade vid videos, movies, which if not checked, our younger generation may begin to view it as an acceptable norm. The House is further aware of several reports where law enforcement agents arrested and paraded suspects of ritual killings with gory pictures of human skulls and dismembered bodies. 
the house is concerned that although our communities are getting more religious with the provision of churches and mosques, the ugly trend of ritual killing is on the rise as the quest for wealth at all costs pervades our society. The house is worried that while youths in other times are embracing science and technology as a way of maintaining peace with a dynamic, with a dynamic world, some of our youths seem slot, stuck in the mistaken belief that sacrificing human blood is the surest route to wealth, safety, and protection. The house is convinced that such cruel and barbaric acts should no longer be promoted in our society given the demands of today's world. The house is also alarmed by the moral decadence in our society, a trend that has promoted the get rich quick syndrome amongst our youths. The house is mindful of the role of the Nigerian movie industry in molding behavior patterns in our society, reserving the mandate of national fame and video censors board as a clearing house for movies produced in our country. The house is cognizant that a lot needs to be done by the police and other law enforcement agencies to checkmate the ugly trend. The house also is also mindful of the role of media as a tool to change this wrong narrative among our youths. The house therefore resolves to declare an, a national emergency on ritual killings in Nigeria a call and call on national orientation agents, agencies, parents, heads of schools, religious leaders, and the media to undertake a campaign to change the nar negative narrative that is bedeviling our society. The House calls on the Executive Director, National Film and Video Censors Board to rise to the mandate of the agency as the clearing house for all movies produced in our country and mandate the House Committee on Information, National Orientation, Ethics, Values and Values to report back to the House within four weeks. The House calls on the Inspector General of Police to take urgent steps to increase surveillance and intelligence, intelligence gathering with a view to apprehend and prosecute all perpetrators of ritual killings in Nigeria and mandate the House Committee on Police Affairs to monitor and report back to the House within four weeks. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Sukwanda. Honorable Ndidi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honorable Ndidi Godwin Yenumelu and I represent the good people of Anio Church the Federal Constituency. I'm from Delta State. I rise to second the motion moved by the Deputy Minority Leader, Honorable Toby Okechuku. I so second. Honorable Toby, I will have said already that you have spoken very well in a very elaborate motion. So if we come permission and the permission of the House, I would like to put the question. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Against say nay. That's heavy. Mr. Speaker, you don't need any kind of permission from the mover of the motion to do what you have done. <laughs> Please, uh, Toby, be guided. <laughs> well, the all petitions that have been laid uh, are hereby referred to Committee on Public Petition. Respect colleagues, there is an announcement coming from Honorable Yusa Ahmed Abubakar and then Honorable Isiaka. Uh, notice of meeting. This is for all honorable members of the Muslim faith that an urgent meeting is scheduled to take place as follows. Today, 9 February 2022, three, uh, time 3 p.m., room 3, 236, House of Representatives New Building. Please be punctu punctual. The speaker is the, the, the business of the day is presentation of, uh, of the conference committee on the bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Maritime Security Trust Fund for training, provision of security equipment, and re uh, regulate facilities, enhance the skills of the, pers uh, of the personnel of the Nigerian Navy, and for the Matisani, now Honorable Yusuf Adamugadi. Honorable Gadi is invited with the motion. Mr. 
Speaker, Honorable Members, I'm Yusuf Adamugagdi. I represent Panshinkaike Kanam Federal Constituency. I'm from Plateau State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that the House do receive the report of the Conference Committee on a Bill for an Act to establish the Nigeria Maritime Security Trust Fund for training provision of security equipment and regulatory uh, facilities, enhance the skills of the personnel of the Nigerian Navy and for related matters. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Recorder, my brother from Akwaibu. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, my name is Francis Charles Duyok. I represent the Karabas in Paren in Eastern Ubulan from Akwaibu. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion as moved by Yusuf Kandi and so second. In favor of the motion, say aye. Against say nay. That's a bit. Honorable Minister, please go ahead and lay a report. The first order of the day is the third reading of the bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria. ACAP A12 Laws of Nigeria 2004 as amended to make provisions for the establishing of Federal College of Agriculture, Chris Kasama, and for later matters standing in the name of, of the House Leader. All members would call that the, the House adopted the report of the Committee of the Whole on the bill on Tuesday, 8 February 2022. I therefore call on the Leader of the House to move that the bill be, be, uh, be read the third time. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members, Adodogwa remains my name. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, I represent the good people of Dogwa, Chidumada Federal Constituency. I am from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I rise in the discharge of my responsibility and duties on the ninth floor of the House of Representatives to move that a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act, Cap A12 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, as amended, to make provision for establishment of Federal College of Agriculture, Krika Sama, of course, for obvious reasons one can understand, and for related matters, HB 1820 be taken the third time. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, Mr. Chairman, Rules and Business, I so move. <laughs> Deputy House Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and my dear colleagues. I am Comrade Peter Ohiozuje Akwatisin. I represent the great people of Akukwedo Federal Constituency. I am from Edu State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support the third reading of the bill as ably moved by the leader of the House. I say support a second, Mr. Speaker. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against the name, that is it. Black is indicted to lead the land title of the bill. Honorable Speaker, honorable members, a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria Act, Cap A12, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, as amended, to make provision for establishment of Federal College of Agriculture, Greek Asama, and for related matters, third reading. Being read third time and passed. The Supreme Court, the second order of the day is commencement of the bill and general principle of a bill for an act. To amend the National Institute of, for, uh, for Cultural Orientation Act, CAP, N48, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and for these matters, standing in the name of, of OSAI, not plus OSAI, all members will call the bill was said the first time on Wednesday, 14 July 2021, and now invite on the OSAI to move that the bill be read the second time. So, Peter, uh, Mr. OSAI, is not on the floor. Uh, so, Peter, I move that. Uh, 
on Wednesday, 9 February 2022, a beef and knife to establish Federal College of Agriculture and Cooperatives, Share Para State, and for related matter. I so move. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Abdurrahim Tunji Olawu. I represent the good people of Ikiti, the same record of the Federal Constituency of Power State. I rise to second the motion uh, moved by my colleague, Honorable Julie Jimon. Uh, I so second. Mr. Speaker, do I have a question? Those in favor that the bill be second and say aye. I can say nay. That's how it. Clark is invited to the long time of the bill. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, the bill for an act to establish Federal College of Agriculture and Cooperatives, Share Para State, and for related matters, second reading. He referred to Committee on Agricultural Colleges and Institutions. The Speaker Colleagues, the fourth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of Bill for, for an Act to provide for the establishment and, co and composition of the Agricultural Development Trust Fund and for late matters standing in the name of the Ademori Equi. All members will call the bill was read the first time on Wednesday, 14 July 2022, and I invite them to move that the bill be read the second time. from where he is. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Representative Taiwo Oluga is my name. Mr. Speaker, I am from Oshun State, and I speak on behalf of all the people of Irewali Aida Adesha from Federal Constituency. I rise this afternoon to support the motion as moved by my colleague. I so second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. The bill seeks for the approval of the House to cause for the establishment and the composition of agricultural development trust funds for the country. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, Nigeria has an arable land of over 34 million hectares. For permanent crops and 2.8 million hectares on meadows and pastures. Agriculture accounts for 
about 24% of Nigeria GDP. And in the last quarter of 2021, it contributed almost 30% of our GDP. However, even though agriculture is a key activity for Nigerian economy after oil, agricultural activities and a Greek value chain provides a livelihood for many Nigerians. Even though the major contributor is the hub, some 70% of our household participate in crop farming activities, while about 41% own or raise livelihood livestock, and 30% are involved in transport, processing, and marketing of agricultural products. Honorable Speaker, respected colleagues, one of the major problems of agricultural development in Nigeria is that of developing appropriate organization to mobilize and induce members of the rural sector to a greater productive effort. The United States of America, Canada, Australia, Brazil, European Union are very successful agricultural producers. This they are able to do because of the kind of fund they put into agricultural research and production. The government in America alone spends more than 20 billion naira a year, 20 billion dollars, so a year, on subsidies for farm businesses. About 39% of the nation's 2.1 million farmers received subsidies in 2017 alone. Mr. Speaker, if this bill passes through and we are able to establish the Development Trust Fund, Nigerian agriculture has the capacity to produce enough sufficient food for the country and even for the whole of Africa. This bill seeks, amongst others, to use the instrument of the trust fund to procure agricultural equipment for onward transmission to agricultural units in subsidy arrangements. The source of the finance for the trust fund is a 1% surcharge on all revenues of the federal government generated by all such agencies such as Federal Inland Revenue, the Nigerian Cost of the Port Authority, and so on. If this is allowed, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, it will conveniently generate at least 300 billion annually for agriculture alone. The fund will also finance crop research agricultural extension and training services. Mr. Speaker, when approved, the bill will help us to track effectively government spending in agriculture and provide measurable indices for growth and improvement. It will also, amongst others, provide effective funding of agriculture and its value chain with a robust subsidy system. Reduce the cost of development of large-scale farming units, such as ranches included. Okay. Mr. Speaker, try, the, try benefits, try the benefits are so enormous. Sir. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the establishment of the trust fund will go a long way in coordinating, articulating, and actualizing the federal government's effort of boosting local food production 
at affordable prices. And it will lower inflation. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, Honorable Mongunu. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, <coughs> my name is Mohamed Tair Mongunu. I represent Marte Mongunu, Ngenze Federal Constituency of Bono State. Mr. Speaker, though this bill is res ipsa liquido, it speaks for itself. But that notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, I want to contribute my widow's might towards broadening the horizon of members with regard to the nitty gritty of what this bill seeks to achieve and having regard to the peculiar nature of the Nigerian agricultural sector and the importance, the pivotal role it plays in the Nigerian economy. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, it is well known to all and sundry that agriculture accounts for about 70% of our employment and is the base of the rural economy. Who are the vast majority of our constituents? Again, agriculture accounts for about 40% of our gross domestic product. That notwithstanding, Mr. Speaker, the highest allocation that agriculture got was in 2007, when the late government of late uh, President Umar Yeradua of blessed memory allocated about 2% of the budget to the agricultural sector. But that notwithstanding, over the years, with regard to our allocation to the agricultural sector, it has been a story of dwindling purchase. Because even this year, agriculture got less than 1% of the national budget. In contradiction to the Mafuto declaration that urges all African countries to devote at least 10% of their national budget to the agricultural sector in view of the fibotal role that agriculture plays in nation's economy. And this declaration was done on their own so motto by African nations on their own volition to divert at least 10% of their national budget to the agricultural sector. Even coming closer home, countries like Chad, those that have not attained 10%, they have devoted about 3-4% of their national budget to agriculture. Ditto Ethiopia and rest of other African countries. But in Nigeria, it accounts for less than 1% of our national budget. So what this bill seeks to achieve is to significantly improve the funding that is being deployed to agriculture because we cannot rely only on national budget to fund agriculture. So it is opening another avenue, another vista of opportunities for funding the agricultural sector so that it will create the much needed employment uh, even export and earn the much needed foreign uh, currency and then create employment uh, in our country, thereby stabilizing the issues of insecurity and what have you, which is the byproduct of unemployment. So against this backdrop, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I urge my colleagues to support the second reading of this bill. Thank you. Take my brother last, but I will appreciate your contribution. But I want to say that this government has done sufficient and are doing a lot. Uh, apart from the federal government budget, you are aware we have missile NISAL intervention, which is purely on agriculture uh, and then the central bank intervention. So we have gone beyond national budget. Thank you. Okay. You want to speak? Thank you. Just putting the record straight. <laughs> Thank you. Because I don't want to speak, oh, neither I want to speak. So he said I should put the question. Yeah, the question. They have started again. That's that's the work of Oluta. Thank you very much, Mr. 
Speaker, my name is Jiva Brahe, Walaji DRF, Saint Lagos, Mainland, Federal Constituency, Lagos State. I stand to give my support to the proposed bill by Honorable Kuye that has to do with establishment of a cultural trust fund. In Nigeria today, we have security trust fund, we have education trust fund, we have health trust fund. If we have and we can establish a cultural trust fund, it will help and create more job opportunity and there will be full security to develop this country. And I think it's a welcome development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Leader of the House, we'll cap it all. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Right honorable members, Ado Dogwa is my name, Mr. Speaker. I represent the people of Chudungwada Dogwa Federal Constituency. Honorable members, I am from Kano State. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise not only to support this motion, which is an all-important motion, uh, I would I like also to concur in total with the submissions of most of the speakers that spoke before me that yes, Nigeria being a very populous country, the most populous in the South African region, Mr. Speaker, a country like Nigeria definitely would like to have a very strong agricultural base that will lead in our economic activities and economic development like most of the other countries around the globe. I agree with the former House Committee Chairman, who is an authority in that area, former House Committee Chair on Agriculture, right Honorable Mohamed Tahir Monguno, who is the chief whip of this house. I agree with him that in some of the budgets we have had in the past, if you go by ratio or percentages, it may appear as if the allocation made to the agricultural sector were insignificant. But it is only fair for me to rise on this respected floor of the House to let my member, members recall that not any government in the past has given due consideration and quite an excellent in intervention to the agricultural sector than the present government led by Muhammad Buhari. Of course, we would like to have more, like the Oliver Twist may ask for. Our people, our constituents live largely in the agricultural sector. But I want to recall that members will also remember and recall vividly that the kind of special interventions been given through the Central Bank, through NASA, these are so unprecedented that no other government in recent past had ever afforded our people this kind of interventions through special programs and special schemes. If there is any other thing that I would like to say, after thanking the government and also those relevant agencies, is that we must also use the committee systems, through our relevant committee system, to make sure that they follow up some of these interventions within the jurisdiction of the committee so that the right thing is being done. The kind of provision, the kind of intervention, the kind of resources that have been injected into the system to improve agriculture are really being, being utilized judiciously. But for the records, I want my colleagues to join me in thanking the government of the day for really taking agriculture as a major mainstay of our economy and the kind of support they give to Nigerian farmers and people in agricultural business all along. I thank you for this opportunity and may Allah God, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The question now is that the bill be raised upon ten. Those in favor say aye. Against say nay. That's how it. Clarks is invited to read the long title of the bill. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to provide for establishment and composition of agricultural development trust fund and for related matters. Second reading. Far to Committee on Agricultural Institutions, Colleges and, uh, and Institutions. The special colleagues, the fourth order of the day is commencement debate on general principle of beef and act to provide for the establishment and composition of aggregate development. Sorry. <laughs> the special the fourth order of the day is, is commencement debate on the general principle of beef and act to establish federal universal medical 
and health science on the, on the state for training, research in the field of medical and health services, health sciences in Nigeria, and for little matters. Standing in Honorable Abiola Peters back in the day, Honorable members, honorable members would call the bill was read the first time on Wednesday, 15 December 2021. Now I invite Honorable Maki Day to move that the bill be raised a second time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Elumelu, please. My name is Honorable Abiola. Uh, keep quiet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Honorable Abiola Peter Makinde. I represent the good people of Hondo, East, Hondo, West, Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise to you <coughs> for the second reading of a bill for an act to establish Federal University of Medical and Health Sciences, Hondo, Hondo State, HB 1770. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Mr. Konda, Honorable Rurum. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Raj Honorable Kikara Lassururum. I represent Chirano Bunko, the GP Federal Constituency. For the Speaker, my respected colleagues, I am from Kano. I rise to second the motion. Every new my, my colleague, I also second my Speaker. The question is that the bill be raised the second time. Those in favor say aye. Against say nay. Die serve it. Clark is invited to read the long title of the bill. Dear Derry. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to establish Federal University of Medical and Health Science on the, on the state for training and research in the field of medical and health sciences in Nigeria and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to the Committee on Health Institutions. Respected colleagues, the sixth order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principle of a bill for an act to amend the National Health Act 2014 and for later matters standing in the name of Honorable Sajjes Ogun. All members will call the bill was at the first time on Tuesday, 5th October 2021. And now I invite Honorable Ogun to move that the bill be raised a second time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and my highly esteemed colleagues. I'm Sergius Ose Ogun. I represent Esan Northeast, Esan Southeast, and I'm from Edo State. I rise to move that a beef and act to amend the National Health Act 2014 and for related matters, HB 1611, be read for a second time. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Seka, the Ari. Thank you very much, our own Arudai distinguished uh, speaker. Distinguished honorable members, Ibrahim Ayokunli Siaka. I represent the very good people of Ifo, Iwe Guru Federal Constituency. I'm from Ogun State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the bill as it will be moved by my honorable colleague, Sajjas Kogo. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable oh, Sajjas, this is the debate. an act to amend the National Health Act 2014 Federal Republic of Nigeria, Official Gazette Number 145, Volume 101, HB 1611. Mr. Speaker, the objective, with your permission, I will read this. The objective of this bill is to amend the principal act so as to make provision for sanctions against any public officer who violates the provision of the act, especially Section 46 of the act, which provides that without prejudice to the right of any Nigerian to seek medical checkup, investigation, or treatment anywhere within and outside Nigeria. No public officer of the government of the Federation or any part thereof shall be sponsored for medical checkup, investigation, or treatment abroad at public expense, except in exceptional cases on the recommendation and referral by the medical board and which recommendation and referral shall be duly approved by the Minister 
or Commission of Health of the state as the case may be. Mr. Speaker, this is the act as passed by the National Assembly in 2014. That will be the Seventh Assembly. The National Assembly made provision to say that nobody should travel for medical. Mr. Speaker, I have the gases here. I can make avail, avail you with a copy. Huh? I no, he, he, he didn't qualify. I said it. I read the act, Mr. Speaker. This, I read the act, and the gazette is here. So what I'm basically doing is not. I wasn't in this assembly then. It's an act. It's the law of the land today. So what I'm basically doing, my amendment is bringing the. Is saying that there should be punishment for flouting that act, which the act did not capture. It can be an oversight. So, the amendment here is an amendment to the section two of, the, of uh, an amendment to section one. And I read, Mr. Speaker, any public officer of the government of the federation or any part thereof who violates the provision of subsection one above shall be guilty of an offence and liable on conv conviction to a fine of five hundred million naira or to an imprisonment term of seven years. Mr. Speaker, yes, I can hear my colleagues murmur, but let me just read out something that was written by, by Ribadu, the former EFCC chairman. It was a caption, capital loss and corruption, the example of Nigeria, in Punch newspapers of Tuesday 30th, June 2009. And he said, So what Ribadu said then was that he noted that a governor in Nigeria acquired four properties in London valued at 10 million pounds, had a property in Cape Town valued at 1.2 million pounds dollars, and was also found with cash of 1 million pounds in London amongst others. All of this cash which flies abroad in the disguise of one medical trip or the order. Mr. Speaker, this was captured Point of order. in the national dailies. Point of order. <laughs> What's the point of order? <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thanks for granting me this special privilege. I'm Honorable Rep. Ibrahim Ayakunle Siaka, pursuant to the House Order 6, which falls under a privilege. I regret to <laughs> withdraw my secondment. On this bill, to the bill moved and being narrated by Honorable Sajjus. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you should please give me that special privilege and uh, let another person, let another person, I can put on my, it's my privilege. Mr. Speaker, with due respect, please, distinguished honorable members, this is not that I'm trying to. You are, you, are not, you are not convinced. Swallow, what I have on paper is quite different from what is postulated. Because of that, Mr. Speaker, before it is thrown open to debate for further debate or before you rule, I withdraw my second Mr. Speaker. Well, thank you, sir. Honorable Siaka, the Abba Adini, Ari, I regret also from the chair. To tell you that once it's a kind of motion, there's no provision in our law for you to withdraw. So thank you very much. <laughs> so, Honorable Isiaka. <laughs>
Oh no, we so you, you, you are in, you are in for <laughs> in for it. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I should, I should put a question. <laughs> you want to contribute? Okay, uh, on Osajos, conclude your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I just read the publication in the newspaper in 2009 by the then EFCC chairman. This is an act of the National Assembly, and I have the gazette here. So I am not the one that made this law. I'm only saying, I'm only trying to cure the defect in the act because there is no punishment for flouting it. So that's basically what I have brought to this. It's not the time to go into the decay in our health sector or the capital flight. That's not what I'm debating today. There's already a, an act, but there is no. Thank you. I think we have given sufficient, sufficient time. Yes, uh, there's no sanction. Thank you. On Honorable Toby, then TJ Yusuf. Then we'll put the question. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Toby Okechuku. I represent an area of Goji River Federal constituency from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the bill that is being sponsored by honorable sages is in all fours with regard to prudence, with regard to make, putting into effect an act of parliament. What is the mischief that the bill is trying to cure? That the bill has recognized that it is an offense. The public purse and Nigeria's effort to be self-sufficiently held and so, far, and so provides that any public officer should not incur bills for, uh, from the Nigerian post on health basis overseas. And a breach of it is sanctionable, is punishable. And he has looked at the bill. There is no particular recommendation to what punishment you give. And as a matter of fact, he cited cases of where the sheriff of EFCC as at that time said that there has been some kind of, uh, of uh, subversion of the public purse in a particular state where about 10 million and houses were bought based on ostensive, uh, I mean ostensible medical trips abroad. So my own take is that the bill should, the, the, the act of- I, I don't want to be, to be speculative. Can, can we know the state? that this thing happen. Mr. Mr. Speaker, we, he will, we will take back to the, the, we will take that to the distance, but I do not think, I think it was, it was merely quoting uh, uh, Ribadu, who was in charge. He wouldn't want to put him out of context. Quoting Ribadu is not sufficient. You have seen Nigerian dailies. Quoting very, uh, what would I say, uh, 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 cap capturing uh, headlines that at the end of the day you find no substance. And if we are trying to kill and the truth, if we have such example, can we may we know? It will help us. Uh, I agree with you, but that is good to be factual. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, I think that there isn't any point providing that you should be punished, and there is no provision of the what the punishment should be. So I believe strongly that the capital flight we are experiencing in this country, the way and manner our people use various excuses to go overseas, and the need, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that our health institutions and medical facilities work without people serving in public or because they can have recourse to public posts and go overseas and get treated. There wouldn't be any attention paid 
to our own health institutions. I think this bill is in all force with the expectations of a patriot and the, 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 the expectations of a parliamentarian. I believe that it should be uh, uh, approved. And uh, Mr. Isiaka, like you rightly ruled, I have no business to uh, <laughs> withdraw his second motion. Thank you very much. Yes, I know, TJ. I have earlier on recognized TJ Kalem. Thank you. Speaker, I'm TJ Yusuf. I represent the people of Kababuru, Jumufara constituency. I'm from Kogi State. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I've gone through this proposed bill, and it's very clear, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, that there's an act of National Assembly that makes this an offense already. This bill is not seeking to initiate that. What it is doing is an amendment to an existing act that there's a gap. That act does not prefer punishment for those who flaunt an existing act. So what it is bringing is an amendment to an act. Mr. Speaker, I want to appeal that what we should do is to look at the amendment on this marriage, scale down if it's, up to, I mean, be, I mean, looking, looking outrageous or whatever view. Yes. But the fact that there's already an act, and say we want to repeal the act and say the law does not exist. Since an act is existing, what we are saying is that is it possible to be a is it to us to allow a lacuna? An act says something is wrong, but no punishment is preferred. The essence of the parliament is to deliberately every time look at the shortcomings in our law and feel it. And Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I appeal to us, please, to look at this bill on its merit. It's an amendment to make sure there's no lacuna. Thank you very much. Kellen. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Honorable Adebayo Balogun, representing Bedulegi Federal Constituency. Yeah, like what I have said, this art is already existing. But what I think uh, my colleagues should have done is to look, we should look at the act itself, the amendment is making, and the amount, because it said 500 million. What, what the act says is, Nobody should use public fund. But if you are not using public fund and you are found guilty, partly 100% or 200% of that amount of which you are found guilty must be made defined. Because someone who pays only 500,000 naira now, found guilty of spending 500,000 naira, will not pay 500 million. That should be incredible. So we should make it a percentage of whatever amount you are found guilty of. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question now is the bill is contact. Those in favor say aye. Against say nay. I serve it. The question now is that the bill be read the second time. Those in favor say aye. aye. Against say nay. The I serve it. Thank you. Bill, uh, the uh, clerk is invited to the for the bill. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to amend the National Health Act 2014 and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to Committee on Health Services, Healthcare Services. The Speaker calls the seventh order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principles of a bill for an act to amend the Trade Dispute Act Cap 18 uh, Laws of Nigeria 2004 to provide medical uh, practitioners in the employment of federal, state, and local government as employees in the essential services sector from embarking on strike and to accelerate administrative and judicial proceedings in the, in, in the determination of the of trade dispute involving them. And for later, my name now of Honorable Simon Chukwemeka Atigwe. One of the members will call the bill was raised the first time on Tuesday, 5th October 2021, and now invite Honorable Atigwe to move that the bill be read a second time.
Mr. Speaker, uh, it seems uh, Honorable Atigwe is not on the floor. Where is he? Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, Ati Igwe Simon Chitiweka is my name. I speak for the good people of the way they know it. We dare not be that content. My brother, can you kindly speak to your mic? I'm from Enugu State. I arise to move that a bit. Let's just step it down. I rise to move that the bill for an act to amend the Trade Dispute Act, Cap T8, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, to prohibit medical practitioners in employing permits of federal, state, and local governments as employees in the social services sector from embarking on strike and to accelerate administrative and judicial proceedings in the determination of trade disputes involving them and for other related matters, we read the second time. I shall move. Seconder? Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Open the lady Christopher as a one question by then. I speak for Rumba North, Rumba South, for a continuity of a number of states. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second that the bill raised by Honorable Simon, the people make a TV be read for a second time. I so second, Mr. Speaker. TV, lead the debate. Honorable Gadway. Mr. Speaker. P point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my respected colleagues. My name is Honorable Gadway Iduma Enwo. I represent Africa North, Africa South Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Ebony State. Mr. Speaker, I come under Order 902 to raise a constitutional point of order. Mr. Speaker, my order is section 34, subsection 1C, section 34, subsection 1C. With your kind permission, Mr. Speaker, I read. Go ahead. <clears throat> no person shall be required to perform forced or compulsory labor. Nobody, no person shall be required to perform forced or compulsory labor. That's uh, the clear provision of section 34, uh, subsection 1C. So, Speaker, I've gone through um, the amendment he intends to make, which is to make it an offense for medical practitioners to go on strike. What it means is that at all times, at all material times, they must be uh, forced to work, whether the conditions are uh, proper or they are not proper. I think it runs contrary to this uh, very uh, important constitutional provision, which is contained in chapter 4 of this constitution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, I think we do not need to debate this. From the constitutional point of order, who is, which is, is right, and if you go back to section 1, uh, 3, 
uh, Section 3 of the Constitution, you cannot make law that would be over and above the constitutional provision. So the only way you can do that is to first to amend the Constitution before now amending the laws. So your point of order is the same. Thank you. I, I think we, you still want to continue? I, I think you did not, you know, we do not need to generate any controversy. As far as the constitutional provisions are concerned, it has been captured aptly. Except you want to continue, it is your own right to exercise. Yes, sir. No. I, I, earlier on, he was advised by colleagues yeah. to step down. But I thought he wanted just to, uh, to test the waters. Well, well Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, uh, this deal is out of experience. I've uh, lost so many of my loved ones through strike by medical doctors and all these things. And I feel that if we can checkmate them, we will save lives in Nigeria. We are not saying they will be forced. I, I'm moving now. We are, saying, we are not saying they will be forced to be working. I provided the, the law is providing procedures on how their issues will be handled. It's not compulsory that they will continue working. No. If they have uh, issues, let me just go, go through my reason so you understand what I'm saying. Honorable Tube, go to the section where you have your order of office. Yes, yes. So that you will not be influenced. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, the time before today is great. Honorable <laughs> Tube, uh, can you listen to the uh, speaker, please? <laughs> listen to him both. <laughs> Okay. On a particular, I'm referring you to the out of office that you took. Yeah. You are now bringing your personal matters. But from the day you took that out of office, you have sworn to Nigerians you will not allow your personal influence. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I'm stepping it down for now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colleagues, good step down by the leave of the house, maybe for further legislative interventions or work. Yes, well, colleagues, the end order of the day is commencement of debate on general principle of a bill for an act. To provide for the establishment of Nigerian Merchant Navy Coast Guard Security and Safety Corps charged with the responsibility of the security and safety of coastal lines, waters, and Nigerian Merchant uh, Navy and for the matter, standing name of our uh, retired Judean Ademi Adefusoe. All members will call the bill was read the first time on Wednesday, 15 November, December 2021. And I invite Honorable Adefusoe to move that the bill be raised one time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Tajidi Nadipsoe, and I represent uh, the good people of Idori, the federal referral constituency. I am from Owondo State, Mr. Speaker. I rise this morning to move that the bill for NAT to provide for establishment of Nigerian Merchant Navy Coast Guard Security and Safety Corps charged with responsibility for the security and safety of the coastline, waters, and Nigerian Merchant Navy be, uh, be, read, uh, be read for the second time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My highly respected colleagues, Abu Bakr Hassan Nella Rabai is my name. I rise to second the motion, ably move 
I rise to second the motion ably moved by my dear colleague, Mr. Jiji. I do so. I so second. Who put the question? Those in favor, those in favor that the bill be raised to contest, say aye. Against say nay. That's have it. Clerk is invited. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, a bill for an act to provide for establishment of Nigerian Merchant Navy Coast Guard, Security and Safety Corps, charged with responsibility for the security and safety of coastline waters and Nigerian Merchant Navy, and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to Committee on Navy. Mr. Colleagues, the ninth order of the day is a motion on committal of the bills standing in the name of Honorable Aboka Hassan Flatter. Honorable Flatter is invited to do the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I am Aboka Hassan Flatter. I represent Bernewa Krika Sama Gulifede Constituency, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, Honorable colleagues, committal of three bills. One. Federal College of Education, Bernewa, Establishment Bill 2020, HB 383, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja Area Coach Bill 2021, HB 67, National Agriculture Development Fund Establishment Bill 2021, HB 1319. House notes that the above listed bills were passed by the National Assembly and transmitted to Mr. President for assent. Also notes that the bills were returned to the we are returned from the President with comments which, if addressed, the bills may be represented to the President for assent. House resolves to commit the bills to the Committee of the Hall for reconsideration. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Seconda. Yes, sir. Honorable Mikey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. I'm Abubakar Maki Eldeman. I'm from Jigawa State. I represent Madam Lori Kauga, my federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, I stand to second the motion heavily moved by my senior colleague. I saw second. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. That's a bit. Mr. Colleagues, the tenth order of the day is a motion on the on call to rehabilitate Malando Tuara Road in Ngaska, Ngaski uh, Shanga Yawuri Federal Constituency of KB State, standing in now of Honorable Yusuf Tanku Sununu. Honorable Sununu is invited to the motion. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu. I represent Yahudi Shanga in Gaski Federal Constituency of Cape State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move a motion calling on the federal government to habilitate Malando to Water Road in Ngaski Shanga Yahudi Federal Constituency of Cape State. The House note the land transport is an important means of transportation or movement of women, goods, and enhanced services delivery in the country. Also note that Malondowara Road serves as a link between the southwest and some part of the northwest. It is also an important route for conveying agricultural produce, such as rice produce from Cape State. Aware that the road is about 70 kilometers, commuters spend approximately five hours or more on transit during the rainy season. And this has brought a lot of hardship, especially to patients under referrals, thus leading to a lot of loss of life and complication. 
also aware that Cape State government has rehabilitated road about two years ago, but yet to be the embossed. However, the road is still in deplorable condition due to heavy trunks flowing through. Further aware that Federal Road Maintenance Agency FEMA had last, late last year commenced rehabilitation works covering about eight to nine kilometers on the Malanda axis of the road. Worried by negative, uh, by no negative impact of the road on social economics, security, and free movement of persons, goods, and services in the area, the House Reserve One to urge Federal Road Maintenance Agency to resume rehabilitation of Malando Tuara Road, which was commenced last year, and two, mandate the Committee on Works and FEMA to ensure compliance. Mr. Speaker, I so moved. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleague. Jafar Muhammad Shatiba Mbagu is my name. Representing Mbagu Agwara Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Niger State. I write to second the motion I happily move my friend, my colleague, my neighbor, Dr. Sun Iso Sakon. Mr. Colleague, this, this is an infrastructure related motion, so I put number the question. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. That's a bit. Let's tell colleagues. Offer. I pray to you. The 11 order of the day is a motion on need for federal government government's intervention in crisis between each and and Chamba Daka communities in Kurmi, Logomi area of Taraba State, standing now Honorable David Abel. Uh, Abel is Honorable Abel is invited to the motion. Honorable Abel, not on the floor. You changed it. Is that your seat, Abel? Is that your seat, Honorable? honorable? Thank, thank you, Mr. Honorable colleagues. I am Honorable David Ebelkwa. I represent the people of Gashaka, Kurmi, Sardona. I'm from Taraba State. I rise to move a motion on the need for federal government intervention in the crisis between HN and Chamba Daka communities in Kurmi local government area of Taraba State. The House note that according to reports, eight people were allegedly killed and properties worth millions of naira destroyed with over 3,000 people displaced in Bisaula, Gonda communities following the communal clash between Echen and Chamba Daka people of Kurmi local government area of Taraba State aware that the state government in collaboration with the stakeholders of the affected communities took some steps to restore peace in the area but despite the effort there is still tension in the affected communities concerned that the communal clash have resulted in the displacement of millions of the people who are currently taking refuge in Baisa, Didan, Sabong, Gida, Tukura, Tukura has the state lacked adequate resources to cater for the refugees from neighboring states as well as those from Cameroon. Also concerned that Taraba State is overwhelmingly overstretched as it is currently camping over 250,000 internally displaced victims of attacks and killing by armed bandits and militants from the neighboring states. Worried that if the federal government failed to intervene, the crisis in Kurmi local government area may escalate despite efforts of the state government. Also worried that despite the hardship experienced by the displaced persons camped at Bisola community in Kurmi local government area of Taraba State, humanitarian and security agencies have not done enough to ameliorate their plight. Resolved 
to call on the federal government to put an effective mechanism in place towards preventing the reoccurrence of the communal clash between the two ethnic groups. Two, urge the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development and the National Emergency Management Agency as well as other humanitarian agencies to establish more refugee camps in Kurmi local government area of Taraba State. Three, also urge the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development as well as National Emergency Management Agency and other humanitarian agencies to deploy relief material to the displaced persons and victims of the communal uh, crisis. Four, mandate the Committee on Emergency and Disaster Preparedness to ensure compliance. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, and my dear colleagues. My name is Olajide Olatubosu. I speak for the people of Atisbo, Sharkis, and Sharkis West Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, from Ohio State. I like to second the motion moved by my colleague, Honorable David. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against any, that is it. The 12th order of the day is a motion on need to rehabilitate the collapsed Kanke Langtang Road. Standing in the Honorable Benny Lad. Honorable Lad is uh, invited to move the motion. Okay. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Lad, Benny Lad is not on the floor. I move that the motion be stepped down by the Leader of the House. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Motion stepped down by the Leader of the House. <laughs> the Speaker colleagues, the 13th order of the day is a motion on need to develop African traditional medicine in Nigeria, standing in the Honorable uh, Bashiru Ayala Dawudu. Honorable Dawudu is invited to move the motion. Mr. Yeah. So Speaker, it seems uh, Honorable Dawudu is also on the floor. I move that the motion be stepped down by the leave of the House. I so move, Mr. Speaker. By the leave of the House. My respected colleagues, the 15th order of the day is a motion on need to construct an airstrip in Michika town in, to enhance security and economic activities in the northeast zone, standing in the north of Zakaria Dauda Wampa. Dr. Wampa is invited to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Honorable colleague. I'm Honorable Dawda Zakaria Nyampa, member representing the people of Madagadi, Minchika Federal Constituency. I rise to move the motion for the need to construct an airstrike in Michika town to enhance security and economic activities in the Northeast uh, region. Note that Minchika town in Madagadi, Minchika Federal Constituency, is one of the most populated local government in Adama State, endowed with the highest agricultural potentials and the highest number of political votes with a significant number of federal institutions. Also note that Minchika is a strategic border town surrounded by Madagali and Goza in Bono State from the eastern part. Hong and Mubi not from the south, Askirawuba in Bono State from the north and Cameroon Republic from the west. Those require an airstrike for efficient operation. Further note that Minchika enjoys proximity with the Sukur Kingdom in Madagali, which is one of the few cultural sites recognized by the United Nations Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and is approximately uh, 40 kilometers from where the airstrike is proposed to be uh, located. Aware that the few airstrikes at Gombe and Yobe are too far from Michika and therefore cannot make any significant impact on the plight of the people of Michika. Also aware that 100 hectares of land at Baza community, which is strategically located at 
Yola Meduguri Highway is a good location for the project. Concern that the non-existence of airstrike is an impediment to economic activities in Madagali, Michika Federal constituency, and the entire Northeast, given its endowment in natural resources, border location, dense population, and high commercial enterprise. Also concerned that the nearby airport at Yola, Meduguri, and Gombe are all located at more than 200 kilometers from Michika, which compel most people to travel by road to their different destinations for business and governmental activities, among others, despite the high rate of insecurity and dilapidated condition of roads. Resolve all the federal government to construct an airstrike in Kuzum, but the town of uh, Madagali, Michika Federal Constituency, Adama State. Mandate the Committee on Aviation Works and not its Development Commission to ensure implementation. I so move, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Before this, uh, we look for the second, we should be guided with the terms involving the Development Commission to be part of that. Are we asking them to start building airports when we know the reason why they are established? Chibui, you are the leader, you should, you should guide. No, the, the airstrip. It should not be their own business. I don't think so. I agree to all your prayers, except involving North East Development Commission. We know the reason why that commission is established. You know it's because of disaster and crisis. To solve issues of disaster. To solve the issue of the ravaging Boko Haram and the rest. Do they have the funds to do that? No. Let's be guided. If you are passing the resolution, pass the resolution that, is, that, that is implementable. Thank you. Because it's, uh, it's an infrastructure motion, uh, uh, after this comment, second, what we'll, what we'll do is to put the question. Empire, you are okay, we should put the question? Thank you. Seconda. Dedeli. Thank you, right honorable speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Honorable Haruna Isa Dedeli, representing Galai Logo Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker from Kano State. I rise, Mr. Speaker, to second the motion, ably moved by Honorable Zakaria. I so second. Thank you. The question now. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Against say nay. That's how it. The 15th order of the day is a motion on need to establish fire stations in com communities hosting petrol tanker farms in Nigeria. Standing now, Honorable Thomas. Honorable Thomas is invited to put the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chief Thomas Erito is my name. I represent the people of Wari South, Wari North, and Wari Southwest. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move a motion for the need to establish a fire station in communities hosting petrol tank farm in Nigeria. The House note that there has been a report of the occurring fire outbreak at various tank farms and involving four tankers in Ubeji, Ifepuru, in Wari South local government area of Delta State, Afapa and Ojo area of Lagos State, Calabar in Cross River State, and more recently, Onisha and Umaya in Anambara and Abia State, respectively, which has led to the loss of life and property worth billions of Naira. 
this house also note that most of the tank farm are located in a residential and densely populated area. The house is concerned that the fire safety regulation monitor by the Department of Petroleum Resources, which has been replaced by the Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority in the Petroleum Act, in the Petroleum Industry Act, by which tank farm operators abide, have not done much to curb the fire outbreak in the tank farm. The house is also concerned that the residents of the communities where the tank farms are located have over the years suffered irreparable damage, losing their lost ones, properties, and other means of livelihood destroyed. The house is worried that there are insufficient fire stations in the area hosting the tank farm, and the colossal damage from the fire has been as a result of the late response by the existing fire service owing to the long distance between the fire station and the tank farm. Cognizance of the need for more fire stations around the hazard-prone communities where petrol tank farms are located to ensure quick response during emergencies and thus save life and property. The House therefore resolved to, one, observe a minute of silence for victims who have lost their life in fire outbreak at tank farm across the country. Two, urge the federal government to establish a fire station within community hosting tank farm across the country. Three, mandate the Committee on Inter to ensure implementation. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Right My name is Obina Chidoka, member representing Idemini North, Idemini South Federal Constituency of Anambra State. I write this afternoon to second the motion as ably moved by my right honorable colleague. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Fago, approach the acting chief, please. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against any, that's a bit. The 16th order of the day is a motion on explosion of crude oil vessels at the Escarabos estuary in the in Delta State, standing in the know of Honorable Gino Pondi on the Pondi's baptism of the motion. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Speaker, respected honorable colleagues. My name is Julius Babuzo Pondi. I represent the very industrious people of Brutu Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker, in Zonkeme and from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to move a motion on the explosion of a crude oil vessel at the Estrawas Estuary in Delta State. The House is invited to note that report of a massive explosion which occurred recently on a floating production storage and a floating crude oil vessel called the Trinity Spirit and its subsequent sinking of the coast of the country at the Estrawas Estuary in Delta State. The House also notes that the incident raised fears that the crew members of the vessel may have died in the fire blaze 
that engulfed the ship after the explosion. The house invited further note that the Trinity Spirit vessel was the main production facility for the OML 108 in Nigeria's offshore, Opokiti Oil Field in the Niger Delta, with the capacity to produce, to process up to 22,000 barrels of crude oil per day with a storage capacity of 2 million barrels. The house is worried that the explosion of the vessel, which had 50,000 barrels of oil in storage when exploded, has negatively impacted the country's economy and may take a long time to recover. The house is also worried about the environmental impact that the explosion has had on the immediate and surrounding coastal communities, such as pollution of the waters, death of aquatic animals, and the dispersal of surviving fish, with its attendant economic hardship on the people who are predominantly seafood farmers. Commend the assistance rendered by Chevron team of putting in Escravos Estuary, the Clean Nigerian Associates, community stakeholders, and local fishermen who responded swiftly to save the burning vessel. Cognizant, Mr. Speaker, of the need to urgently provide relief materials to the affected communities. The House is invited to resolve one Mr. Speaker, call on the federal government to urgently mitigate the effect of the explosion on the affected communities by embarking on the cleanup of the polluted waters and the coastal at coastline, as well as provide relief material and pay adequate compensation to those affected by the oil spill. Mr. Speaker, two, urge the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources to investigate the urge the Federal Ministry of Petroleum and host community committees sir, to investigate the cause of the explosion on the floating production storage and on floating vessel, FPSO, the Trinity Spirit to prevent recurrence of the incident. Finally, Mr. Speaker, mandate the Committee on Petroleum Resources to conduct an on-the-spot assessment of the area of the incident to make recommendations towards averting a recurrent and report back within the House for further legislative action. Thank you, honorable members, for the opportunity. Honorable Bondi, sir, do you think the Committee on Petroleum Resources have the capacity to conduct on the spot assessment? Yes. Um, I believe did, that... Did the prayer, get the prayers of his motion, first urging the Federal Minister of Petroleum Resources to investigate then we are to conduct the on the spot assessment. Can you take the last two prayers so that members will be clear? We we'll just ran into similar problem with the pro, uh, with the motion from our brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, the last two last 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 prayers. The two prayers. All the Federal Ministry of Petroleum Resources to investigate the cause of explosion on the floating production storage and offloading vessels (FPSO). The Trinity Spirits to prevent a recurrence of the incident. Two, mandate the Committee on Petroleum Upstream and Mr. Speaker, the House Committee on Community, Post Community Committee, the Joint Committee, sir, it's very possible, sir, to on the spot assessment of the area of the incident to make recommendations toward averting future reoccurrence and report back within four weeks. Second, the first. Chukuka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm Chukuka here, my represent Obaru Federal Constituency of Anambra State. I stand to second the motion ably moved and amended by. He has amended his motion. Yeah. Amended his prayer. Amendment as well. First, the content of the motion. You went get the content of the motion. He amended the prayer as well. No, <laughs> just. <laughs> okay, ably moved by my brother on the report. Thank you. Uh, the Martins are amendment.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honorable Bundudu Godwin Elumelu, and I represent the good people of Anyocho Shumifaya Constituency. Honorable Halims. I'm from I'm Delta State. With. My amendment is to the effect that we delete prayer 1, 2, and 3. And the chair wants to see you. Go back. And my prayer, my amendment is to the, is to the effect that we delete prayer 1, 2, and 3 and replace it with uh, mandate the House Committees on Petroleum Upstream and Downstream and host communities to investigate the cause of this explosion, provide solution to mitigate future occurrence, and assess the extent of damage and communities affected for compensation if need be, and report back to the House within four weeks. I so move. Sajos. You want to accept the amendment when earlier on you said there wasn't need for it? You want to second now? <laughs> no, we're not debating. It's investigative. We don't normally discuss. Yes, sir. My chairman, Gas. Thank you, Speaker. Mutu Nicholas Eboma is my name. I represent Bomodi Patani Federal Constituency from Delta State. The Speaker, I rise to second the amendment made by my own leader, my brother. I so second. Those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Against say nay. That is it. For the amendment? Okay. Those in favor of the motion as amended say aye. aye. Against say nay. That is it. <laughs> yes, leader. Uh, Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, Honourable Members, my name is uh, Alassan Ado Dogwa. Mr. Speaker, I represent the good people of Dogwa, Tudungwada Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, Honourable Members, I am from Kano State. I rise, Mr. Speaker, following a consultation with the Speaker in the Chair on a point of a procedure, sir that I would like to seek the leave of this House that reference to a motion earlier taken by way of resolution by Honorable Chidi Momo, where in the end the prayers read that the House urged the Inspector General of Police to ensure a thorough investigation into the disappearance of the Neyland Five consultants. I'd only subjected our committee, standing committee here, the, the respected committee on police affairs only to the status of follow-up to ensure compliance. Mr. Speaker, based on my discussion with the mover of the motion, respectively, and we approach you in the chair, you have given me the mandate to move that this House do respectively allow this motion be rescinded, that we rescind this motion in, the, in respect of the resolution earlier taken to mandate the Inspector General to carry out the investigation, to now instead refer the investigation procedure or process to our respected standing committee on police affairs. All other things that have been taken by way of these resolutions remain the same and subsist. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I plead with you to allow this decision in the, east, in the interest of our normal legislative procedure. Thank you, and I so move. Thank you. We uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, my name is Mohamed Tahir Munguno. I represent Martin Munguno, Ganja Federal Association of Borno State. I second the motion heavily moved by the leader of the House. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against any. That's subject. The 17th order of the day, sorry, we have one minute prayers uh, as proposed in the motion there. Pray the motion. Can we rise for one minute uh, prayers? All of the party rest in perfect peace. Amen. 
The 17 order of the day is consideration of report of the, of the conference committee on a brief and act to establish the Nigerian Maritime Security Trust Fund for training, provision of security equipment and regulate facilities, enhance the skills of person, uh, personnel of the Nigerian Navy and related matters. All members recall the report was laid on Wednesday, 9 February 2022. On a useful guide, will move for its consideration. Speaker of members, my name is Yusuf Adamugagdi. I represent Panshinkanke Kanan Federal Constituency. I'm fr from Plateau State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move that the House do consider a report of a conference committee on a bill for an act to establish Nigerian Maritime Security Trust Fund for training, provision of security equipment, and regulate facilities, enhance the skill of personnel of the Nigerian Navy, and for related matters and approve the recommendation there as late. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Jega. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, my Honorable colleagues. My name is Mohamed Umar Jega, representing Aleru Gondu Jega Federal Constituency. I rise to second the motion, heavily moved by my friend and my brother, Honorable Yusuf Gadi, I so scan. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. Die serve The 18th order of the day is consideration of three reports on the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services. Honorable Amin Suleiman will move for their consideration. Mr. So Speaker, uh, Honorable Amin Goro is put on the floor. Uh, I move that uh, consideration of the three reports be stepped down by the people of the House. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Consideration of the three reports. Step down. Step down by the leave of the house. You want to support the motion for stepping down? <laughs> uh, consideration of the three reports. Step, uh, three, three reports step down by the leave of the house. Leader, move that the house do dissolve in the committee of the hall to consider the reports. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, Honourable Members, Adodogwa remains my name. Mr. Speaker, Honourable Members, <coughs> I represent Dogwa Tunumada Federal Constituency of Kano State. Mr. Speaker, I rise in the discharge of my responsibility as leader of the Ninth House of Representatives to move that this House do resolve to Committee of the Hall to consider a report. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I so move. Chibui. Uh, honorable Speaker, honorable members, my, my name is Mohamed Tahir Monguno. I represent Marty Monguno, the Federal Constituency of Borno State. I second the motion that the House do resolve the committee of the whole to consider a report. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. That's serve it. The House is here to the Committee of the Hall to consider the reports. The third colleagues, the first report to be considered is for the, is that of the conference committee on a bill for an act to establish a Nigerian Maritime Security Trust Fund for training, provision of security equipment, and regulate facilities, enhance the skills of the, of the personnel of the Nigerian Navy, and for labor matters. I now invite Honorable Yusuf Adam Gagri to give the synopsis of the bill. Mr. Chairman, Honorable colleagues. This bill was passed by the House of Representatives and sent to the Senate for concordance. And in the course of that, Mrs. Chairman, uh, we happened to come across a clause that there was a need for. Uh, the House recommend that the appointment of the Executive Secretary should be with the recommendation of the Minister. 
while the Senate disagree with that. But in the course of the conference committee, we agreed that there was a precedent of similar agencies when the executive secretary was appointed, minister refused to inaugurate because he was not consulted. So in order to address that leg uh, legislative lacuna, it was resolved that the Senate version be adopted and members unanimously agree that the appointment of the executive secretary should be the prerogative of Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That particular issue has guessed is that of um, Christine Gigi on the board of NSATF. So, very clear. Clause one, which is the only one, and uh, it is normally the practice of the House, we don't debate, we don't amend conference report, we just adopt. Carry it? Thank you. Leader move that will revert to plan to report progress. Uh, right, honorable chairman, honorable members, I rise to move that the House will resolve to plenary. No, it, it, Rebut to plenary and report progress. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, honorable chairman, honorable members, my name is Mohamed Tahir Monguno. I represent Martin Monguno, that's the federal constitution. Yeah. I second the motion that the House do rebut to plenary to report progress. <laughs> Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. That's how it. Rebut to plenary to report progress. My dear respected colleagues, the House and the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the committee, Conference Committee on the Bill for an Act to establish the Nigerian Maritime Security Trust Fund for training, provisions of security equipment, and regulated facilities, enhance the skills of the personnel of the Nigerian Navy and for little matters, approved clauses 14, and the long title of the report. Leader, move for the adoption of the report. Speaker, allow leader to walk. Um. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, may I, may I move that the reports of the Committee of the Whole, as read by the Speaker in the Chair, be adopted. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I so move. My honorable is a prerogative leadership to do that one. The <laughs> the, yes, sir. Okay, honorable Speaker, honorable <laughs> members, I second the motion that the House do adopt the report of the Committee of the Whole. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Again, say nay. That is have it. Leader, move for the adjournment of the House of tomorrow, 11 a.m. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank honorable members who have been very patient with us in the proceedings throughout the day. And even for those who have been engaged in other legislative businesses out there, on behalf of the leadership, I thank all of you for great service to our great country, Nigeria, in this capacity. And I therefore move that this house do adjourn till tomorrow, Alhamis, 10th day of, <laughs> 10th day of February, 2022, by Alfie Gomu Whip. Honorable Speaker, honorable members, I second the motion that the House do adjourn to tomorrow, the tenth day of February, by 11 a.m. <laughs> Those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. That's have it. Bag Bagos, Bagos, approach the leader, uh, clerk, please, quickly. Clerk. Approach the leader with that. I leave this one to tomorrow when he comes. With your cap. You. you and your cap should approach me. <laughs> <laughs>